What is up my dudes, it's Pac-Man here and today I'm chilling out with Picnic, the coach of the Pittsburgh Knights Pro Rainbow Six Siege roster who just managed to finish second in the Oceanic Nationals and third in APAC overall. So a really good stage one that just finished up now for the first part of the season. So um, yeah, I'm here with uh, I'm here with Picnic, what's up dude? Yeah, not much, um, it was a good season, I'll just say that. Yeah, good season indeed. Really, really, um, really impressive, man. Really impressive. It was sick watching you guys throughout and like towards, yeah, like obviously you started off pretty strong and then built the momentum throughout. And by the end, you guys were uh, pretty hard to touch. So I guess uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a uh, bit of a cheeky yarn, nothing too crazy. Um, we're going to go over some some basic questions, get to know Picnic a little bit better, and um, get to know the role a little bit better as well. Find out what it's you know kind of like to be a pro league coach and uh, what it entails. So I guess um, starting off, my dude, how how did you get into Siege? How long have you been playing Siege? Uh, I've been playing Siege ever since it came out, pretty much. I think I got it in December of when it, I think it came out November, and I got it December. So I've Pretty much since it came out, uh, and I kind of just got into it because I liked the idea. I was kind of into COD on console at the time and Battlefield. I liked FPS, and I wanted a FPS that kind of made you have to think a little harder. And Siege was exactly that. Wow! So you're a, you're a true OG to the Siege <laughs> round then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've only been playing since um, 2018, so I I'm, I'm a bit, I came in a bit late. So you were on PC or were you on PC, like PC only. Yeah, yeah. I used to. I, I was a console guy uh, initially, though. I was playing uh, a lot of Call of Duty as well. So I used to play Comp Card, and then um, actually came over to PC to play Fortnite. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> so thankfully, we found Siege. And uh, so, how how old are you now, man? I'm 19. So I started 19. playing when I was like 14, I think. Wow. And um, yeah, I guess then like talking more specifically about uh, coaching itself, how, how did you get into coaching and you know, how did you end up with the Knights? Uh, I kind of just got into coaching because in a way I wasn't good enough and I didn't have the resources to be a player. Like uh, I lost a fair bit of money. I had like a shitty gaming laptop that I couldn't really play on. I was on like 30 FPS and I, <laughs> but I still really liked playing Siege and watching Siege. Um, so I kind of hung myself up as a player and just said I'll do like analyst work and coaching to stay kind of in the scene and stay yeah. relevant I guess make sure I still and, have an understanding and did you like what was your first role with like a like an amateur team or how did it yeah how did you start in that sense when I came to PC I was just a player with like Extricity which was an under 18 team for a bit and then once I gave up being a player I just bounced around teams being an analyst being a coach I came back as, as a player for a little bit but then eventually just came, went back to coaching and after bouncing around maybe three or four teams I found myself on the nights and it was perfect yeah right and were you guys was it the were you, was the nights the nights when you arrived first or uh, when I first came in we were challenger league and then we were called homeless homeless um, challenger league and then after month or two i think we qualified pro league and then since then we've just been going up and up it's cool and then so what is it what's it actually like like being a like a pro league coach like what do you you know what what do you what do you do like uh, <laughs> i know that sounds a little bit uh, vague but what, what what's your actual job what's your, your role entail uh well i'd say that my main like my main strength as a coach or the main thing i take focus on as a coach is strategically just looking at the game and understanding of the game and telling my team and giving advice on like what we should do how we should change and things we can fix in our team yeah. i know other coaches kind of lean more on um like the mental side and they have a better understanding on how to like how to be better role models for their players um yeah. but i'm a little like younger i don't have as much experience and stuff to help them in that regard so i kind of focus on strategy and just helping the team be better at the game yeah right man that's 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 honestly super cool and what are the, what are the, some of the like I guess challenges that that pop up in terms of being a coach? What's the hardest thing? Well, the hardest thing probably the the same uh, thing for a player where you kind of run into scenarios where you just don't have any answers, and mm. you kind of where you take losses or maybe you're just scrimming a bunch and you're losing a bunch of scrims, so you're getting rolled and you don't have any kind of solutions. That's mm. probably the hardest part. Um, 
especially when your team's kind of like relying on you in a sense. Um, yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So then what about um, what about some advice that you could give to uh, either a, pl- a current player or maybe someone that's just, you know, striving to actually be a pro um, or to be a coach in either way? So I guess starting with like, what would you say to someone who said they wanted to play uh, professionally um, as a player? What advice would you give them? And then, you know, what advice would you potentially give someone that um, would consider coaching? Uh, advice to a player uh, is... It's a little bit kind of up to the player and it's you you got to make sure you're able to recognize it in yourself but you need to know and be honest with yourself and with your teammates like if you're constantly just blaming your teammates or you're looking externally on other factors rather than like what you could do better or what your team as a whole could do better um that's always a good thing like attitude is very important in a team um and if you're able if you're able to have that then you'll be able to stick around with a team for longer often with like amateur teams they'll break apart just because their attitude like they have a bad attitude and they want to leave and they're not happy with each other or something but if you can stick through and work through your problems as a team then it will be much better for you advice for a coach i'd have to say probably just look in term like i said i lean more on strategy side of coaching so in terms of strategical advice I'd have to say just kind of look at Pro League a bit more, like in EU and NA, kind of focus on how they play the game and get an understanding of how they play the game. It's not really about who who can make the better strats and stuff like that. It's about who has a better understanding of the game. So just keep watching Pro League, keep trying to understand and question why they do certain things, and eventually you'll be able to work out like why they do that thing and you can emulate it in your own scrims. Makes sense, man. Makes sense. And I think that's like a super important thing that you mentioned about like attitude because it's one thing that i talk about a lot um on my channel in terms of people that are looking to improve i said one of the first things that you need to you know resolve the first things you need to focus on is yourself so focus on you know if you're constantly shifting blame to you know other players on the map or you know to to external factors then you're not taking responsibility for your own kind of play then how are you ever going to know how to improve on that player how are you ever going to be able to actually get better if you don't think you're wrong so um yeah i think that's that's a that's a really important thing to touch on for sure what we're going to do now is we're going to uh have a look at two clips the first clip is going to be a ocl an ocl clip so the challenger league clip uh of from my perspective and uh my man picnic over here is going to roast me uh and then what i'm going to do is i'm also going to look at one of the apac games or the ocn games um from the boys the knights and I will um, fangirl over it, I guess. I'm not sure. Three points on the board. Let's go. My not lobbing. Three points on the board. Let's go. The um, our, our team is literally an, the absolute boomer squad. Our average age is 24. That's not, that's not really? All right. Yep. 24. Anyone ever play more at all? Crazy. I know. Uh, I know. Buff is buff is 28. I think pants. I believe pants is like twenty six. Yeah, like I think. Yeah. I'm I'm twenty four. Grills is nineteen. And Shaq's twenty one. So we are. Uh, yeah, we are. Old oh, boys. Unfortunate. All right now. Hey, Avin, right side is clear. There we go. The elite level comes. Clash is in the double. Clash is in the double. Ooh. Okay. I know, eh? And they actually put Twent on Clash here, which was um a bit of a mistake. He was the only one that was like fragging. Uh, I can smoke yeah. you if you want. Right side's clear. Nobody's copy right now. Uh, I'm jumping I don't know how I feel about Clash. Yeah, neither. Clash is not Visa. Going down Visa. I'm going in. Going to copy. Can someone drone meeting? meeting? Gone back towards con. Yeah, I'm droning meeting. It's just Clash from what I can see. Just right? Clash. No one in meeting now. No one in meeting now. Oh, this is free. You can't this is free. Meeting. Can we um, get the wall open here? Yeah, yeah, coming. So I've actually thrown away two drones there, which is probably not so good. You don't even need to get the wall open. Yeah. I don't have anyone in meeting. No shit, eh? Is there, are you sure there's not one in meeting? No, bro. There's ADS okay. on ping. 
Can we burn okay. ADS, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can burn it. I can burn it. Sounds like one, one burn, spiral. Burn. I think that's what I realized here. Yeah. So we definitely don't have fam um, below control. <laughs> yeah, we do. That's top yellow net. Another dead nade Another dead nade I'm in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, that, was too easy. that was a bit too easy. Too easy because we're so good. So is that is that officially? Are we are we being picked up by the knights? A five stack? A uh, couple things to learn, but uh, yeah, I can definitely see potential there. So what do you what do you think? Is it the um it, the big the big thing missing there is probably below control, like you said, hey? Below control. Um, maybe uh oh, you had the trade, which was good. Everything was kind of fine. They fed you the pick against the Clash. There's such little the Clash can do, especially once they give up. They pretty much gave you admin, gave you meeting. Mm. You guys just walk in the park, park, really. You just strolled in on through. What do you reckon about the plant spot there? That's probably, that's probably ain't it, eh? Uh, actually, it's probably the better one. Do uh, you reckon? Yeah. It's hard. It's mainly because you won the fight against the Jaeger on top yellow. Um, yeah. But because Connector Repel died, um, it's hard for you to get to what we call Atletico spot, which is the southwest corner of meeting. Yeah. Um, planning behind the bomb is very common, and a lot of people pre-place nitros below or like see for it, see right? for it from Connector or something. Um, so the corner is probably your best bet. You just kind of got lucky on that Jaeger, which made it even easier to plan in that corner. Woohoo! We're at, we're validated by by Big Dick. Let's go, Big Dogs. Let's do it. Um, cool. So should I check out a the APAC clip? Things out here. So this is a trophy bomb site. Just to talk about. Oh. So uh, we get the early pick on the Wham I. Uh, oh. They have this like uh, Goyo shield set up that they play in bathroom that we've seen before from a previous world. We had yeah. a way to deal with it, but Hobbs just said, oh, "I'm just gonna walk back in." Fire and time. Is, uh, <laughs> that's gonna. Hold uh, we we do wow. end up clearing him like in a later round when they go trophy. We have a way of clearing him in his spot. Um, with like nades for a little while which works out well for us but getting uh, that first pick I, in the first I was 10 seconds say, just was to talk really about big the for us again. and that's and literally just straight through after a window yeah to assist on the that's nice here. later sigs probably does make you think as attackers that you would lean more towards pushing direct or just make so at this point we're all kind of just focused on getting the master bathroom control you really only have your drones, Josh I think is just joining in some other of areas of the map to see what's free and what they're holding not the most ideal yeah scenario. and so you guys don't uh, um tend to so go for really like a trophy uh, sorry like a study across take uh when you're playing on trophy are we uh, playing against trophy it, it depends on the team like against we did a lot of prep work for Fnatic on our villa. Um, Sketchy helped out a lot with that. And yeah. uh, we, we just said, this is how we're going to do. If they're doing this setup with Goyo in with a bathroom shield, this is kind of what we're going to do. The back foot right we had now, a plan Matt, going into it. Against yeah. other teams, we have done study pushes in the past. Yeah. Be heavy tagged cool, up. Man. They've already lost this opening pick, only one minute in. And now it just really does give knights a, a bit more to work with tex going down to Dude, you guys have done so much damage already as well not the greatest yeah. start once more look at the drone like economy kind of knights withering mm. away still with five drones up though mm. what so at this point um, that trend, but because now, we've got the map control and we've gotten a pick as well they're taking the defenders have rotated a little bit and we're trying to bait them to rotate so peaks over josh is over on chamber window trying to hold rotates off uh, yeah, um, just the and we're just trying to get a pinch on the side. And, and finding these picks on site. I think a big, a big thing we've been trying to do so recently well. that has been working out is just putting pressure on the defenders mm. and making really them good panic. control here from yeah. the knights. So not giving them any kind of like breathing room. Fanatic. Yeah, Sage is going over the study buff as well, trying to well get some map control. There is a player still sitting yeah. Astro stairs. And so you're happy to do that. Hey, you're happy to kind of just send send Sage across by himself, like without the ability to be traded. Yeah, there's well, um there's obvious risks in doing it. Like it leaves your main push weak, and especially if a team knows you're doing it, it's really easy to counter. Um, mm. 
but we knew going into the Fnatic game how they'd react to certain things, and we knew we could just send Sage over. This is where the Knights don't really have control. a lot of problems. Yeah, right. Harps with the Skylight Repel just comes up with that mid game. You have an air jab. No. And speaking of yeah. air jabs, hey, with the no player. My God, so I've done that to Ippy Star once, and it was <laughs> the highlight of my career. Yeah, yeah. So I think, <laughs> I think just before he went for a repel, we said we were at the point where we were ready to do like some sort of execute. So Harps mm. said. I'm just going to repel down Skylight, don't. and when I do this, you guys can go. Really so he goes down, gets the Echo, which is big. Um, <laughs> and then after that, we all just start pushing in, trying to go for I trades. Potentially have an air yeah. jab for that Dunno's flank. Just holding speaking across of air jabs, trophy. Hey, with the Nomad player, has been hot the... in this round. So at this point, nice. Juice is pushed in, and he's, tr he's baiting the plan on uh, we what we call boy-girl statue. Mm -hmm. uh, juicy. But we're just waiting to kill this Goyo. Sage and Josh are trying to pinch the Goyo on top landing before we go for the plan. Pushes through. Yeah. Starts a plan to bait, it. and the Knights are just Dude, all over just Fnatic on this one. Mag. Yeah, no he's chance split. for Fnatic. Yeah. Surely and Mag that's can't move because he's stuck in a corner, and Dino's holding yeah. him. Box and then Tex is just stuck in Astro. With Hobbs is no rotated HP over to Bark to his name. Him. Like it's crazy because like See just like looking later. looking at the the map like yeah. looking at the rounds without you know your commentary there it's just like it just looks like you kind of find a few, a few picks you know it looks like you yeah. just get some early picks and it's like yeah well done like you know fanatic shouldn't have um i guess over peaked or you know like stig's dying early it kind of just looks like almost like a, a relatively lucky kind of series of events with you know hey, like hey we're getting the wall bang and whatnot but it's just super interesting to see that like it's all pre-planned and predetermined yeah um and you know even even down to that like sage rotate the execute there with hey Hayward um going down over over skylight as the push kind of like commences or just before yeah it's it's so cool I, I had a question that just popped into my mind that like i'm pretty sure some of the boys watching this video are going to be interested in um so when when playing obviously when playing like ranked and you know in some for some people playing comp sometimes you come up against teams that are like hyper hyper aggressive right like especially on defense when you're attacking they're contesting entry right to the point where they just they won't even let you put your face in a, in a window like they're just yeah. they're like yeah like all over you um with aggression what what would you say is the best way to deal with like hyper aggression run outs yeah contesting entry and and whatnot how would you say is the best way to deal with that uh it was something we kind of uh struggled with pre-season because we started to scrim a lot more asian teams and they had that aggression where they just wouldn't let you into the building and uh, mm. i think the biggest thing that helped us it's very individual uh but it's just trying to find any point to get a starting ground on your attack mm. like i know they they can deny a lot of your entries but on most maps they can't deny every entry and if you're good enough at looking for your entry points then you'll be able to get a foot in the door and then make an attack based off that other maps it's a little harder um because there's some lim limited uh entry points but in those scenarios you just have to have a very structured way of dealing with like a position or a uh an aggressive spot super interesting man it was crazy to see the the intricacies i guess of like of of strategy when it, you know at the at the very highest level um so yeah I, I really do appreciate you uh you spending the time to to enlighten me man yeah, no worries anytime and uh yeah thank you very much uh to picnic again for uh for taking the time out for for having a yarn and um i hope you guys found some value uh from this conversation i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh yeah i guess without wasting too much time i'll see you guys in the next one peace